Welcome back to the channel. We're going to finish up the machining on the Upshur vertical single engine and get it running. So this is a tool that the plans call for in order to cut the seats into the head. So here's the piston rings that we made. This is cast iron that we bored out the ID and then the we cut a slot in it and then there's a piece of steel which is a spacer which gets inserted into the into the slot that we made and then the ring gets heated for about a minute to cherry red and then let it cool and this puts the spring tension into it here's the cylinder head after we cut the fins into it and then the for the valve guides bottom side of the cylinder head and you can see the hole for the where the spark plug comes into from the left and then the other two holes are the valves and valve guides and then we have already cut the seats into the head using the tool there's another view showing the cylinder head and you can see the threaded section there where the spark plug comes into the combustion chamber Lockup showing the cylinder head installed onto the engine. Here's the start of the valves, and they're laid on a quarter just to give you an idea of how small the guides are. This is made out of stainless steel. There's another view showing the retainers installed onto the valve stem and then we've cut the angle for the valve you can see at the bottom. And here's both valves installed in the cylinder head with some springs and the retainers and the pin that holds the retainer. Started for the rocker arms. There's a view showing the rocker arms are on the stand and the push rods are on there. And then I made a stand. I saw this idea on the machinist website. And I like this design. It's not called for in the plans, but it, it's better than bolting it onto a wood block. Here's another view showing the rocker arms that are on there. And I still got to put the adjuster screws in there. And then on the left is the exhaust that I made, and on the right is the tube that'll go and connect to the carburetor. Here's another view showing the muffler that I made. This is my own design. It, the plans just call for a pipe sticking out. And then you can see So here's another view showing the you can see the push rods and then you can see the camshaft gear cover and then you can see what is the the brass piece on the bottom on the right is the start of the points brass piece that gets soldered to another brass piece that gets bolted to the side and then the, we will install a tungsten piece on there for the points and it rides on the cam on the ignition cam on the end of the camshaft, and this is what triggers the points. So here's another view showing the rocker arms. And here's the same quarter for scale. Here's the start of the carburetor, and then there's a screen that I made for a kind of like a breather on the end of the carburetor. Here's another side view of the carburetor. You can see the breather that I made better with the screen installed in it. And this is the carburetor per the plans. It's a barrel top carburetor. 
There's a view showing where the carburetor will go out on the engine on the end of the intake tube. <clears throat> and getting it to run, so you'll see later I actually make a different style carburetor. I found the plans for it uh, downloaded free off the internet. I'll put a link to that down in the description. Here's the end view showing the carburetor with the breather. And here's the jet for the carburetor on the same quarter, just to give you an idea of how small this is. Those are 256 threads. And here's the points after we got the... I took these off of an actual set of ignition points and then soldered them onto the new piece of brass. And then there's a brass screw on the right. And then that's in an insulating block, which I 3D printed so that it's not grounded out to the frame. And here's it in the open position. And you'll note that there's two nuts on there, and that's so that you can adjust the gap on the points. And here's the fuel tank that I ended up making. Um, this is two three-quarter inch pipe caps that are soldered together in the middle. And then there's a tube coming up right hand side that the fuel will come out of. And then there's a little section and then a cap on there. And then it's drilled and gets a cotter key in there so that it has a breather hole. Here's the quarter for scale to show you how small this fuel tank is. And here's more of the carburetor and we've got the fuel tank installed on the engine. I made a platform to bolt it onto the side of the engine and then made some brass straps to hold it. It is critical the distance of the bottom of that tube to the height of the jet on the carburetor and it gives you a range and the plans of where to install that at. So this is the wiring diagram for the engine um, from the battery. It doesn't matter really whether it's positive or negative, but we've got coming out of the positive side going through a switch into one side of the coil, and then out of the we've got going to the insulated side of the point, and then the other side is to the engine, and then there's a capacitor between the insulated side of the point. So it ran, but it didn't run good. <clears throat> I was having trouble with valve seal, so I ended up installing some actual valve guides into the cylinder head. Originally, the valve seats was just cut into the aluminum of the head itself, so I locked it and pressed some brass pieces in there and cut some seats actually into those. This did help, but I had to do a lot of lapping to get those valves to seal. Also had trouble getting the head to seal good against the cylinder, so I ended up making a really thin brass head gasket. So here it is, tore back down, and we're setting the timing between the crankshaft to the camshaft. I, it was running, but it still wasn't running good. shows the timing wheel that I made. I printed this out and then taped it to the end of the flywheel so I could set TDC and then I could adjust the timing for the opening and closing points on the cam. And we remade the camshaft lobes using the plans that's in the book. So you'll see the fixture here in a minute, but you need to rotate this piece every five to 10 degrees. So I made some marks on there so I could index it when I was cutting it on the lathe. So this shows the fixture on the lathe that I used to cut the cam. And the piece is offset from the center a certain distance and then you make a cut 
and then you loosen that screw and then you index it over to the next mark and then you make another cut and then you end up with a series of cuts that forms the camshaft lobe. So here it is after I took the first cut and then I'll index it over to the next mark and then make another cut. So here's the two new camshaft lobes that I made. And a lot better using this method. So after you make the camshaft lobe with a series of cuts, you end up with some small little flat sections that you can see. So I took a needle file and kind of blended all these in together. So here you can see the new camshaft lobe on the right uh, compared to the old camshaft lobe on the left. And you can see how much larger it is. <clears throat> so this is definitely <clears throat> changing the duration of the camshaft and some amount of lift. And the new camshaft lobe did work out better. The old one did run, but it just it wasn't running right. And I made a whole new camshaft and then put indexed and uh, loctited and pinned the new lobes onto it. And this is the new carburetor that I made, like I said earlier. The old carburetor ran, but it didn't run good, so I ended up making finding these plans on the internet and then made a new carburetor, but I was able to use the old uh, breather that I'd made for the other carburetor. <clears throat> 